listening to the Subtle Forces Podcast. I am your host, Anja Not Anja. Oh, it has been a while. I was in the Shadowlands making shadow puppets with opera students and balancing a day job. And so, it has been a while. 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 Recently, I was out typing poems from my typewriter, one after another. I had zillions of customers that day, and then a woman came up to me and said, I have your name. Oh, well, that happens every once in a great while. I will be out and meet someone who is also named A-N-J-A, but they pronounce it Anya, never Anja, like me. So I said, oh, but you probably pronounce it Anya, right? No, I pronounce it Anja, just like you. What? 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 This has never happened before. I have never met an Anja. Have you met an Anja? Anja? Oh yeah. There's a little girl who goes to my church. My Serbian church, who's also named Anja. Are you Serbian? No. My mom and dad just liked the name. Anja. Wow. We proceeded to talk about what it was like to be an Anja for some time. We both agreed that... Being an Anja probably gave us a more direct personality where we don't really hide things. Whereas if we were named Anya, there'd be a lot more subtlety and nuance to us. Which is actually pretty ironic because you're listening to the Subtle Forces podcast. But I've always felt more like an overt force. I say what I think, and I can't bear to keep a secret. Anja had with her a good friend, and this good friend had me write Anja a poem about what it is like being named Anja. Hello, Anja. Like... Watching a sliver of myself in another body. A sliver of spirit. Hard. Straightforward. J. I trust you more than a polite, keeping up with appearances, soft, Y sound, Anya. You are a truth teller, keeping it real and amiable for the joy of life. Not the sucking up. Maybe I am getting too judgy. I just 
remember a time when I joined an online group for people named Anja, and the number one topic they all seemed to bond over was the fact they hated it when people pronounced the J. It's the ugliest sound I've ever heard, they said. And then I left the group because it wasn't my group. You, sweet Anja, are my group. Anja is between one or two decades older than me. She's a gentle yet assertive midwife. I asked her, has anyone ever named their baby after you? And she said, not yet. And we both agreed that one day it might be nice to meet again. Later that evening, I called up my mom and told her about the whole experience. I sent her the selfie I had taken of myself with Anja. And my mom reminded me that I am named after one of the students my mom taught art to in the 70s, a girl who would be somewhere between a decade and two decades older than me. Anja, the student, was someone who charmed her. Had, she had starry blue eyes and blonde hair and was a very gentle, good student. And my mom had her in like 1973 or 4 as a student and then remembered the name when she finally had me in 1987 and named me Anja after her favorite student. And my mom was wondering could it have been her and so she thought about what school she was at Lincoln and I texted Anja I said Anja were you a student in 1973 in grade school at a Lincoln elementary and she said no she was at this school in Hales Corners and then I told my mom too bad but my mom said oh Oh, well, I taught there, too. I must have transposed schools. And so I told Anja, and Anja sent me a picture of herself from the time, her school picture. And I sent it to my mom. And my mom said, that's her. That's who you are named after. I met my namesake. All right, we're calling Anja now. Hello. Uh, hey, Anja. Hey. All right, uh, uh, Anja. As you know, uh, th- this is Charles Purcell, and you you are our uh, correspondent to the real world. I've been hermitizing ever since the beginning of COVID. Are you actually out in the real world right now? I am. Wait a minute. You're going too fast. You're you're overloading my senses here. This is amazing. No, it might be difficult to hear what I'm going to say for the next few minutes because there is a flock of motorcyclists out and about, and uh, they have their radios blaring. So you will not be able to hear what I say in a moment when they cross the street. Motorcyclists. Uh, as, as I recall, those were uh, vehicles of conveyance with two wheels, right? Yes, and uh, these are uh, tricked out motorcycles. They look extra shiny. They have uh, rose gold uh, hubs and a very streamlined uh, homemade looking uh, bodies. And they are very schmancy and they want you to notice them. And they are doing things that are illegal right in the 
intersection so that you have to look at their motorcycles. Is there some sort of event, parade going on where you are? They're just celebrating life, Charles Purcell, just celebrating life. Do you feel safe out there? Oh, I feel as safe as the woman in her mid-30s who just walked past me on the sidewalk Whoa. by herself. Wait a minute, how, how, close, how close did she pass by you? Oh, I'd say about uh, eight feet. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's people out here. They're holding hands. Uh, holding hands? Yeah, yeah. There's people gathered around a parking meter trying to figure out how to pay without coins. Are there still are there still uh, parking meters? There are, but they're they're new contraptions. I'll, I'll describe one for you. Okay. They they uh they look just like the old ones, and there's still a, a coin slot, but uh, they're now digitized, and now you can pay with a Visa, a Mastercard, or Discover, uh, or your phone. Uh, and I, it's a little beyond me how that works, but there's flashing lights. It looks like the car in this instance, there's two cars. The parking meters are good for, and the one on the right has, uh, three minutes left. The one on the left has one hour and 56 minutes left. So not only are you a real world correspondent for me personally, you're like a correspondent from the future because I haven't been out in, in since the beginning of COVID. So anything you're seeing and reporting back to me now is, is futuristic for me. So, so now uh, parking meters can be paid with your phone? Yes. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Yep. And so we still have cars. Yep. Are they all flying cars now or anything like that? Or? Uh, no, but there's a lot of uh, uh, electric cars or hybrid electric cars. Um, yeah, I've heard. I've read about them in the news. I still get the news. I still read the news, but but I haven't actually experienced. Yeah, I did see. I did see someone on a on a bicycle with a reflective vest. Uh, so bicycles are still a thing. B- bicycles are all electric now, though, aren't they? No, no. Actually, my husband has two. He has an electric bicycle and an old school like. Uh, fixed gear bicycle so they still make those so there's both they still make those they still yes and then it's brand new actually when i say old school it's just uh more in that it's not electric all right we're we're speaking with anja not anja my uh correspondent to the real world and to the future because i've been a hermit now since the beginning of covid um do people look the same as has has maybe fashion changed what's the what's the fashion these days Oh, sure. I see some uh, flared pants are coming back in style. I see a woman with a, a faux leather jacket and flared pants. And and that seems to be the, the trend that's coming back is, is flares. Um, skinny jeans are going out, but you can still tell a lot of people are wearing skinny jeans and they tend to be millennials or older, whereas the younger people or the people who are hip are not wearing uh, skinny jeans. That's right. Millennials are, are no longer the young generation, are they? No, we're the old folks. So much time has passed since I've been in the real world. Now there's something called Gen Z. Do you see any Gen Zers? Um, no, because I don't think Gen Zs really uh, get out in the world much. They're more like me. They stay inside? Yes, yes, yes. Unless the woman who's reading on a park bench happens to be Gen Z. And in fact, I do believe uh, a member of the the Generation Z just passed me, or maybe even younger, because she looked like uh, she might be about eight or nine years old. <gasps> children! Oh my God! Tell me about children. Well, they still wear Mickey Mouse on their sweatshirts. Oh, I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> purple, purple jogger pants, and they walk in close stride with their mother. All right. So mothers are still a thing, going out with your mother, walking down the main street of the downtown Bayview is still still a thing with your mother. You, you think these are good mothers? I mean, that sounds maybe kind of, that's, that's almost abuse to take your child out into the real world these days. Well. You think it's a good idea to, to go out? If I can do it, Chucky Bucky, anyone can. You, you think I should try to go out? Well, you know, I did just see uh, three three elders 
fully masked in beautiful rhinestone encrusted masks with walkers. I saw them. They they made it out. So so if they can do it, you can too. Uh, I'm I'm not yet in the walker stage, uh, but <laughs> but a, a well festooned mask sounds like a nice idea. Yeah. Did I use that word correctly? Festooned. Yes. No, I think you did. Okay. Indeed, you did. I turn to you for questions like that because you're more erudite than I am. Well, yes, I uh, I happen to be approaching the bookshop uh, shortly. Oh, I remember bookshops. Yeah, tell me about them. What do you remember about them? I remember that uh, they had a wonderful smell. That was my favorite thing. And the other thing I remember about bookshops is they made me um, simultaneously exhilarated and depressed because there was so much beauty and knowledge to be had and I knew I could never attain it all. Yes, and you'd never even get around to to reading the vast majority of it. Exactly, it would be it's a, it's impossible to uh, read even a fraction of it. So, so you're in a bookstore now, or next to one? I'm next to one because I'm looking at the cat in the bookshop window, Bustopher. He's he's sitting in the sun with his uh, polydactyl paws splayed out and his eyes squinting because he's. He's at rest. He is relaxing. Cats in the sun. That's that's a timeless image. And I'll, I'll walk in now. Let's see here. <gasps> oh my God! You don't have you don't have to do that for me. <laughs> You're gonna walk actually walk in to a building. Yeah. Wow. So are you inside now? I am. Oh my God! This is very exciting for me. Okay, you're inside a building with strangers. Yeah. Wow. What's it like? Well, it looks like uh, people have been going through the books. They're kind of scattered everywhere, disorganized. People have been buying books left and right. Okay. There's cat toys strewn on the chairs. Does it have that uh, bookshop aroma? It does, and it smells like coffee, too. It smells like old paper and coffee. And a little cat mixed in. Well, yeah, he sniffed my hand. His nose touched my hand. It's it's as though you're on on a on a distant planet interacting with life forms. Here's the the bookshop shopkeeper who will talk with you. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Hello. Hello. Yes. Hi. Th- this is uh this is Charles. Who's this? Franz. Franz. It's so nice to uh, talk with you. Are are you the uh, manager of the bookstore? The owner of the bookstore? I am not the owner, but I am the employee. You're the employee of the bookstore. Okay. Are they treating you well? Yes. Oh, yes. Do you feel safe out in the real world? Do you interact with fellow humans? I, I do, although uh, going into big public places, I've been kind of resisting, but I still am fairly public. All right. Hold on one second. Do you have a restroom? You do. Yeah, right here. Are, you know, Anji, if we're taking this guy's time, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to take up his time if he's busy. Uh, there, um, people still have to use the bathroom in this era. Okay, okay. Our bathrooms, I imagine, they're pretty much the same. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And 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 Franz mm-hmm. is uh is he frightening at all to you, or does he seem friendly? He's he's like a gentle giant. Oh, he's a big guy. How how are people interacting? <laughs> like like when you went up to Franz, was he fearful of you? Did he back away? Did he recoil? He looked excited. I think people are still excited to interact. Wow. The, you know, it's, I'm so glad you're doing this for me. The world sounds wonderful. <laughs> and, I've, I've, and I've been so afraid. So have you lost Franz now? Is he off to other things? Why don't you? What, oh, yeah. What? I, 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 I'm back on the street again. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Franz, if you're listening. Back on the street. That was really exciting. I can't believe that happened. I wasn't expecting you to actually go inside. This is really great. So the sun is shining. Are, are there still birds? I remember there used to be birds. You know, I know I've seen birds, but I don't see any birds right now. They might have all migrated or died. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Well, it's that time of year. That I, f- I forgot. They may have. There's, there's still a bottle of wine on the ground, so alcoholism is still a thing. I'm I'm in front of the uh, the Futen Dojo traditional martial arts place and and class isn't going on right now. But I I know the other night I saw people in there 
um, attacking each other. Oh, is that one? Of, oh, I just heard a car horn. I remember yes, those. Car horns are still. It a sounded thing. just. Oh, listen to that. Oh. They're not moving. It's that's just like the car horns that I remember. But yeah, people are still confused about how to uh, proceed where the street splits. So jerks are still a thing. So that hasn't changed at all. Bad driving and jerks on the road behind the wheel. I feel like they're bigger than ever, honestly. Oh, really? Okay. Oh yeah. See, my my vantage of the world is just out my window, and it's a, it's a beautiful vantage. What do you see? Well, I, I I happen to live in an apartment a few stories up, so I have a view of the river right below me, and the and the and the river walk, and the woods, and the park. It's very nice. And then off in the distance, I have a view of the lake, and then next to that, a view of the skyline. So it's very pleasant. But all the details within my view are are in my imagination. I can't actually see them. I can't see the detail. I can't from from where I am. Oh, and so you, you have to infer. Yeah, and. And I can make up wonderful things, and I choose to be positive about what's going on down there. But you're my eyes and ears today. Yeah. Wow. Well, I kind of, I, I was passing the bus stop. I didn't want to say it, but it looked like there was a drug deal going on. But they also looked nervous because it was a drug deal, so I didn't want to look at them. Oh, we should have talked. So, we so I averted my eyes. <laughs> we we should have talked to them. <laughs> right. Oh, now yeah. That, I, I would have enjoyed that. But, uh, Let's see here. Then here's the here's the comic book shop. People are still buying comic books. Oh, that that's still a thing. Okay. Yeah. You you've you chose quite a great neighborhood for our talk today. Oh yeah. What? Well, this is just everywhere, Charles Brussel. Everywhere is like this. Really? There isn't any spot where there isn't lots of things happening. Wow. You could go in the forest and see 500 people because that's how it is now. Really? That's how the pandemic changed it. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, you can't escape people. The only way you can escape people is to be a hermit. Which, exactly, which is what I've done. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, anything else to report, or have, have we completed our, our tour? I think we've completed our tour. I hope you found it fascinating. I did. This was eye-opening. You've inspired me. I'm, I'm. Maybe I'll give it a try. Maybe, I, maybe I'll ask you to go along with me my first time out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be my guide. We'll, we'll kind of up the ante just one. And I don't want to. I don't want to misbehave just because I'm ignorant of how how th people interact these days. Well, well, some things, some things have definitely changed. Like when you greet someone, it is customary now to say F you. Really? Wow. Yes. Hi. F you. Really? Wow. Yeah. Be I mean, that doesn't surprise me too much because as someone who's become uh, spent more of my time online, there's lots of the F word out there. Oh, yeah. Something else I've noticed online, I'm wondering if it's also in the real world. Do Are people flipping each other the finger constantly? Oh, yes. Oh, All yes. Right. Both hands, even toes it, in warm weather. So maybe I should I do that as, as an act of greeting or... Um, well, the first thing you should do is just say, hi, f you, okay. and then do the action. Okay. All right. So some new customs I'm not aware of. All right. Good. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wow. The other thing I see online is people just uh, um, spontaneously breaking into dance. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, and it is also customary for everyone to be walking around with a tripod for their phone. Because everyone is simultaneously conducting a phone video for TikTok or their video blog or some other YouTube live situation. So everyone is being recorded constantly. So the line between real life and documenting your life has, has merged. Yeah, it's all one thing. Ah. In fact... Uh, shops all have selfie stations now. It is uh, required by law. Selfie stations? Selfie stations, yes. What, what is that? Well, it's where you go for your selfie when you're shopping, and you have to do it. Hmm. You, it's considered rude and illegal to not take a selfie at the selfie station when you are shopping. And it also helps protect people against shoplifters because, you know, who's going to shoplift if you're 
If you document it at the selfie station. And does that automatically feed? Does that data, that imagery automatically feed to like the NSA and TikTok and the yeah. Chinese? Oh, absolutely. Oh. And the Chinese Communist Party. And yes. And, and it that. automatically posts three hashtags with your selfie. It posts the, the hashtag of the shop, the hashtag of the city, and your own personal hashtag. Okay. And then that goes directly to your whatever your your Instagram or Facebook or whatever it goes Okay. Yes, absolutely. Good, good, good yep. to know. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Because here in the hermit yeah. world, we still um, control our own. Well, m- at least maybe we think we do. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. You control things. I control you. You, I, I. Ah, recalibrating. Recalibrating. <laughs> Google cannot find questions. <laughs> Now that I think about it, I think it's just the maybe the control isn't real. It's just an illusion of control. Alexa. Hey Siri. Alexa. <laughs> I think Alexa and Siri are off on their own, doing their own thing together. Fifteen. Four, okay. Spandex. Recalibrating. <laughs> Question broken. Please try again. Well. Anja, you're just the best. Thank you so much for being my real world correspondent today. I am your real world correspondent. Oh, Lord. Okay. I'm going to uh, bail while I'm still. <laughs> Wait, did you hang up? Leave a message for Anja, not Anja. Charles Purcell for entrusting me to give you a real world tour. Thank you to Anton Seeger for making the music of this show. Thank you to Anja Farron for being a good student and child and giving me my name. Please give this show a review on Apple Podcasts. It helps people who like bizarre shows to find this show. And if you cannot figure out how to review us on Apple Podcasts, you can review Apple Podcasts with a very negative rating like Megan McGee did and then email that to me. Hey, when encountering any subtle force, remember, you have both your logic and your feelers to interpret it.